Hello and welcome to Somerville Media Center Live for December 16th, 2020. I'm Joe Lynch. We are joined today by City Council President Matt McLaughlin, City Councilor at Large Kristen Strezzo, and Ward 4 City Councilor Jesse Klingen. Good afternoon to all three of you. How's everyone doing? Good afternoon, right. Joe. Doing great, thanks. Terrific. Terrific. Um, on today's show, we're going to try to do a little bit of a wrap up on the year that I think all of us are anxiously awaiting uh, to get rid of. Council McLaughlin, first, before we start, I want to thank you uh, personally for all the time and the effort that you have put into uh, appearing and inviting your fellow city councilors to come in to the media center virtually to give the city updates. So from us to you, thank you for your time. Thank you for your efforts. Why don't you take it away in terms of um, any kind of COVID update and stuff that you want to talk about with the other two counselors today? Yeah, thanks, Joe, and thanks for having all of us as well. I uh, just want to give a quick update because there have been some significant changes uh, to COVID in Somerville. Unfortunately, we are at 50 deaths right now from COVID from the beginning of this. Uh, the city of Somerville announced that they're going to be roll back, rolling back uh, COVID-19 reopenings to a modified version of phase two, step two, which essentially impacts a lot of gyms and uh, recreational facilities. So play, so indoor fitness places, indoor non-athletic instructional classes like the arts, the yoga, things like that, um, and indoor recreational venues with potential for low contact like rock climbing, Brooklyn boulders sort of things. Uh, those are, we're, we've rolled back to close those. And on tomorrow, uh, last week would have been our last meeting of the year, uh, but we have a special meeting coming up next week uh, because the mayor is asking to appropriate $5 million uh, in uh, basically bailout money for local businesses uh, who are not receiving any benefits from the federal state government right now. There will be a lot more details on that. I, I don't have all the details, but they are asking for a $5 million bailout while we wait for the federal and state government to do something. So that's an important update for people. And uh, that's all I have on the COVID front. Thank you, Matt. Matt, that $5 million, I assume, will be an application process by the small businesses of Somerville. They'll have to make that application process to the city. Um, so it's not like an immediate handout. There will be a time lag. Am I, am I correct in that? Yeah, we haven't discussed that, but that sounds right based off our last uh, bailouts that we gave for the small businesses. And that money went incredibly fast. Uh, we, there was definitely more applications than there was money to give out. Uh, well, so it's a very difficult situation. Well, let's hope that we can get it um, efficiently distributed to those in most need. Matt, I wanna let you take it away in terms of your fellow counselors. Uh, I know that Councilor Strezzo has appeared on the show, Councilor Klingen has appeared on the show. I also wanna thank your other counselors who have taken the time out during this, this time uh, to appear on the show, but welcome back to the both of you. Um, Matt, why don't you to be take here. it away? Yeah, I'll be very quick because, you know, we want to talk about the past accomplishments for the past year. Uh, and we've actually gotten a lot done. But the thing I want to focus on right now is just the fact that we have an open and transparent government right now, um, which was that was in jeopardy starting at the very beginning of this. So from the very beginning, we moved immediately to a remote model uh, operating from home uh, via camera, as we're doing right now. And we had some snags, but by and large, it's actually been a really great process. We've had more counselors appearing. We've had more residents attending public meetings. And I do, you know, I don't want to compare ourselves with other cities uh, in a negative sense, but you know, there, there were some cities that did not get it together in terms of uh, how to even conduct a meeting. And, you know, there's some cities that Council has refused to even attend a meeting if it was remote. Uh, there was division, uh, there's big issue like bickering between people about how to conduct a meeting and what to do. And we didn't experience that at all. We all <clears throat> rolled with it and everybody did their role. And as a result, I think we were probably one of the most efficient and effective councils in the Commonwealth. So I'm very proud of that just to keep the government open. And uh, the first few months we focused exclusively on COVID issues and didn't take up anything outside of COVID. But once we got our feet under us, 
uh, we really started taking up issues that we would if there was no pandemic and we, and we handled the pandemic at the same time. So I'm sure my colleagues can elaborate on some of that, but for me, I'm just proud that we actually had an open government and really uh, missed some of the obstacles that a lot of other cities had to deal with. That's great. So Matt, why don't we, why don't we go with um, Councilor Estrezzo who was thrown into um, her first term in office, um, a baptism by fire, as they say, Kristen. Um, you weren't in office for, uh, you were only in office for a few months before the pandemic hit. You wanna describe what happened to you when you started to attend your first meetings and then what you've been working on. Um, I know that you, you've got housing and community development. Yes, uh, so, so May 4th uh, is when I, I was sworn in and we were already full swing in pandemic. I attended meetings uh, for um, a good firm month to get to make sure that the that the switch from uh, Councillor Hirsch to me was as seamless as possible and so I was up to date with the most current of issues and so there were no hiccups as possible there's of course at least a, a steep learning curve and I have not yet sat at my city council desk um, although I do know there's candy in the drawer. So um, can't get to it, but I survive. And I, I do I get, and I like the idea of the hybrid model. I have had my first public hearing virtually. I've had a lot of experiences virtually and it's been uh, exciting to uh, work uh, with my colleagues in, in new ways and expand and broaden our skills. At the same time, I miss that connection to our community. And I miss that um, the energy of a meeting because it is definitely an in-person meeting because it definitely is. And I really stress the importance of our community and connection. And I know that there's so many of our residents struggling with that lack of connection and how difficult it can be. I am hoping in the future that we do, uh, we can create some kind of hybrid model possible so that yes, absolutely that um, our residents have the full accessibility for our public meetings in every capacity, because yes, there there does seem to be uh, more more residents able to get on to meetings and in public forums, and that's really exciting. Uh, I've uh, and I, I am the chair of the Housing and Community Development Committee. I love it. I am honored to tackle such um, extreme issues with with um, care and much respect uh, to the process and to uh, all of our residents and I'm I am hoping I'm doing the best uh, I hope I'm serving my constituents well and I am fully so devoted. Very, so very quickly Kristen what are some of the major highlights for you this year so far and what are some of the things you're going to be working on into the future? Uh, with housing and community development or uh, in yes. general? Yep. In housing uh, in housing yep what? Yes. yes housing and community development sorry. Well, we have the Winter Hill Plan on the agenda tonight, and that's going to be a big one. But also, uh, in, uh, we're, we're working on uh, seemingly small things, but aren't. Uh, one of the orders uh, that doesn't seem like a big deal, but really, really is uh, huge, is the, the playground signs, uh, where we talked about um, how, how we're working for the spring, uh, creating playground signs so that children that either uh, are nonverbal or cannot communicate or have not yet the skills to communicate from point to uh, what what um, what they need things like running or bathroom or leave or slide those things make things easier for parents I want to make sure that uh, that life is easier for parents in uh, going forward in Somerville and that's also something we're tackling on the agenda tonight. We're talking about how about out of school time, and, and that is just being discussed on the agenda as well. Uh, how how vitally important it is, and how we're serving our parents and our guardians and our children during a pandemic. Because what I hear constantly from parents is that parents are just barely holding it together, and rightfully so. And we have to really be addressing it and talking about it course with housing that's huge and we are consistently I keep that on the agenda every month talking about housing and where we're going with that and what the numbers are and I want to definitely let my colleagues have a chance to talk but housing instability is is dire right now 
We're also handling a lot of issues with businesses and making sure our small businesses can survive. Um, it's a lot of uh, heavy work. I'm happy to get in there and, and do everything I can to sustain what we can. And I know there are so many moving parts, especially during the pandemic with the eviction, no eviction notices. Um, great, great news in terms of the city coming up with additional funds for housing for yeah. those folks who are at risk of yeah. becoming um, unhoused. Um, the work that the city council has done in terms of the zoning overhaul and the zoning overlay districts, providing for more affordable housing. Councilor McLaughlin was speaking to that in the past couple of shows. Um, but if you're if you're good, I want to turn it over to um, you. Mentioned the Winter Hill uh, overlay, and I think that uh, Councilor Klingen is probably just chomping at the bit to talk about. Um, <laughs> what that means for his district. For those who are unfamiliar, um, there is now a new plan uh, for the old Star Market site and some abutting properties in the Winter Hill District. Council Klingen, take it away. <clears throat> Thank you, Joe. Uh, glad to be here. I just wanna back up for one quick second and um, give kudos to the good president for how he handled this entire pandemic in terms of just keeping things moving smoothly. Uh, his leadership on this has been extremely important. And I'm, as he said about the other cities around us, not to point anybody out, but I'm extremely proud of our city um, and the way that we handled ourselves and the way that we just seamlessly got back to the work of the people um, as soon as humanly possible. And I also agree with Council Strezzo that I think a hybrid model is important in the future because it has, we have seen the increase in, in um, attendance in the meetings, but we've also seen the, uh, you know, we've also had that Zoom fatigue where we've basically uh, longed for those in, uh, personal interactions where there isn't different energy in the room. So, so those things said, uh, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a, a wild year, obviously. Uh, with the pandemic, but but things have been moving. And one thing that's been moving is the Winter Hill Urban Renewal Plan. Um, that's long overdue. It's, it, it, you know, uh, long before me, the, the, you know, things stalled. And uh, and since I've been on and just, you know, trying to heat things up and keep this moving and, and get this plan going. And, uh, and here we are, we have a renewal plan that came out of a robust community process. It's many meetings. Uh, meetings that I've I held on my own, meetings with the city, meetings joint meetings with the <clears throat> with the city economic development team, and uh, and so I'm really excited that we're now at the point where we're discussing the plan. It, the urban renewal plan for Winter Hill has gotten the approval of the the S, initial approval from the SRA, uh, the the planning board, and uh, is now in front of us and. Um, it's this is the second time it's in front of us. It came up a couple of weeks ago, and um, we weren't quite ready to put it to a vote. Um, I think uh, now that have, folks have had a chance to look at the plan and, and listen to what's happening in the community, um, and <clears throat> and really, I think the entire council is excited to have this. Everybody knows the stock market site has been abandoned forever, and um, so I'm confident that we're going to see something happening there within the next year or two um, after, again, a long robust community process of what we'd like to see there, uh, what, we, what we'd like to see happen there before it goes out to, uh, to, you know, to, to be partner with a developer. So I'm extremely excited, extremely uh, happy and confident that uh, we are gonna get the best possible project that we can up on Winter Hill based on the maneuvers and the, and the, uh, the strategy that we've been using and that, that, that in working with the community and the economic development team and, and, and having a uh, strong leadership, I think we're, uh, we're, in, a, we're in good shape. So. Yeah, see, I, I know um, I'm gonna try to rack my brain cells here. I know that there were at least two previous representatives from Ward 4 who had made attempts at trying to get the site redeveloped. So now it's in your lap, but let me, let me see if I can frame it correctly on what I sure. understand. By by the recommendation of turning the prop of turning this over to the Somerville Redevelopment Authority, is it mm -hmm. our understanding as a community that some of those properties are going to be taken by eminent domain? That's correct. So what we're calling the Star Market site isn't just the Star Market building. It's actually um, four different, or three different parcels. Well, one owner, four parcels, one owner, uh, Mr. Cohen, and then two separate the, the corner uh, spot, which is the liquor store, and the um, adjacent building to that, which is the um, the barbershop building, we call it, with some residents up above. On Temple Street. Correct. 
Yeah. So what it basically does, I looked at the plan very briefly, and what it basically does is take an almost rectangular square. If you look at the map, it takes uh -huh. a square of property and it says we're going to redevelop this whole thing. A butters um, will have obviously something to say. Property owners will have something to say. But are you confident at this point that the plan looks to be stable enough that, that the council will look favorably on it? I do. I do. Um, I'm very confident of that. And like one of the most exciting things about this, Joe, is the first thing, the reason why the renewal plan was the, was the tool um, over the over a d demonstration plan was number one, because um, there's those two uh, unique parking lots down on Sewell Street that uh, are also part of the, the one parcel there. Um, or actually, they're part of two parcels, one that goes a line drawn directly through Walgreens. So, so I'm excited because we're going to redraw the lines. We're going to lop off those two lots almost immediately, uh, and the city is going to move to, um, you know, I'm hoping that we can get one purchased by the land trust or given to, or purchased by the city, given to the community land trust, uh, the Sumble Community Land Trust, and then, uh, you know, we'd have room for an open space and other one. So that's, you know, growing up here and walking through those parking lots, walking through Star Market, I lived on Grant Street, and just not understanding what those even were. And they're just so out of place on a residential street. So I think that's one of the most exciting things. But but to answer your question, I, I think everybody sees the value and uh, of, of having a you know transit oriented uh, um, residential mixed use uh, development up there. And, and there's many, many ideas in the community uh, and we're gonna flesh those ideas out. And so hopefully um, everybody's happy with what comes out of it. But uh, you know, that, I don't think we'll please everybody including myself. I'll, you know, uh, our standards are high here in Sun World, but we're certainly going to fight tooth and nail to get as much as we can. Well, great work so far, but I don't want to ignore another big uh, redevelopment that may be coming to Ward 4, and that's mm -hmm. in the Gilman Square District, where the T-stop is being located behind the high school. Yeah. Um, Gilman Square, I know, is, is due for a facelift. Is there any more movement on that, or is that out to 2021? So... There's a, there's a group of citizens, the Gilman Square Neighborhood Association, who are actually extremely active and they've been, they've been pushing the city for like either updates to the neighborhood plan or an overlay district, but it really needs some, uh, some sprucing up uh, from what the plan was, you know, five years back when they did the process. Um, so we're pushing and naturally it's a great opportunity when we have a transit stop coming in there I mean, this Gilman Square has a potential to be a really, really um, great place to, you know, with access to our city hall, our, our high school, our library. Um, it is re really, really the center stop on the green line that I think uh, the potential is there, the community desire is there. Um, as far as moving forward, you know, I mean, funds are always an issue and, and, and staffing, but but the push is there. And I think uh, if, we've ever, if we've ever, we're gonna see something great in Gilman Square now is the time. Well, as you know, um, you know, from my own standpoint, I live, live in a neighborhood that is um, very close to the Lowell Street Magoon Square stop. And uh, mm -hmm. we're keeping an eye on redevelopment efforts that may undergo here in Magoon Square as well. Mm -hmm. So best wishes on the Gilman Square side. I know that the um, Nantucket- Can I just say one thing, Joe? Sure, Jesse. So, so uh, no, I didn't mean to, I just to top that off because the interesting thing about Gilman Square is that it actually intersects with wards one, three, and four. So, so this will definitely be a, a, a joint um, counselor effort uh, between myself, Councillor Ewan Campen, and Councillor McLaughlin. So, uh, if anybody uh, wasn't aware of that, it's uh, this will actually be a real, um, uh, uh, you know, co-counselor effort, if you will. So, so that's exciting too. Well, I want to I want to throw it back over to Council McLaughlin for a minute. He's not only president of the council, but he represents you know the Nantucket district of the city down in Ward One. And, and I'm wondering, Matt, do you have any kind of major redevelopments other than your Assembly Square district that are slated for the Ward One area? Well, I'm not sure what you mean about the Nantucket district. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think our home values have gone up that much yet. Uh, but actually tonight, uh, at the same time of the Winter Hill meeting, Councilor Estrezzo, I should tell you this, not on camera, but uh, <laughs> uh, there's going to be a meeting about uh, the police station, the public safety building at Cobble Hill Plaza. 
uh, that we also seized by eminent domain last year or a few years ago. So that is not only going to be a police and fire station, but we're hoping to get a lot more benefits out of that for the community, uh, commercial space, a, a residential space, open space, uh, community space, all sorts of possibilities there. And that meeting is going to happen tonight at six at the same time as the Winter Hill meeting. So I'll be jumping between uh, both meetings there. So that's probably the biggest news as far as uh, East Summerwood development. And then, of course, assembly is always, there's always a new development. So we're, we're in the middle of a neighborhood plan for assembly square, for assembly row. Um, we have the assembly edge development, which is right by the highway. We have assembly a lot of big commercial spaces and um, lab space, things like this. Assembly is just constantly being assembled. So that, that, that's a beast of its own. And then we also have uh, the police substation or the not substation, the public safety building that will be discussed tonight. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> I just wanna make sure the other two councilors understand I did not set that up to get Councilor McLaughlin to talk about the Cobble Hill site. Um, but I think great minds think alike. It came to my mind when I was, ta I was talking about what's happening in the different wards that we did take a property by eminent domain, the co old Cobble Hill site down there, and nothing's happened. But I'm glad that that, that has jump started again. I, I, I wanted to give Council McLaughlin, I'm gonna hand this back over to you if there's anything that you want to discuss with the councilors about work um, that is gonna be demanded of all of us as we weave through the winter months and into hopefully, hopefully, the closing days of the pandemic with a vaccine um, on the horizon. I, I just wanted to know, because people have been asking me, since the news of the vaccine now being distributed, what can we hope for here in the city of Somerville in terms of some point, maybe in the spring or into the early summer, what type of vaccine distribution system have we got in mind? So I can't answer that question right now because uh, I don't know, but I will tell you that, you know, when it came to testing, we were the first to really do serious testing. Uh, when it came to cleaning PPE and distributing PPE, we used Assembly Square there um, for really stepping up for the region as a whole. So I can't tell you what the vaccine plan is, but based off past experiences, how we've been leading on the pandemic, I'm optimistic. Councilor Strezzo, anything on that front? No, I, I think it's way too early to hypothesize as of yet. I do want to mention, put a plug in about the, the Cobble Hill um, I mean, a domain concern though, and, and the redevelopment plan and that. And I do hope that we have, because that area is a, also a food desert. So I am certainly hopeful that we have some good options for food for our residents in the area. Of course, with Cobble Hill residents. Councilor Klingen. Oh, did we lose him? No. Muted. Mute. Yeah. Remember Sorry, I would agree with I would agree with Councilor McLaughlin that um, it is a little early to tell, but uh, I'm sure Director Kress is working on 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 things with our community partners as well as the state. You know, usually we take direction from the state, so when that comes down, I'm sure we'll be the first, we'll get briefed as a council. The public will have uh, access to that meeting, and uh, so hopefully we'll have a plan in place soon. But I, I do have confidence in our, our leadership that we we will have a plan when it's time to have a plan. Well, how many more meetings have we got to go there, Councilor McLaughlin? I know you made mention of a special one coming up. Yeah, so hopefully tomorrow is the last meeting of the year. Uh, it really depends on what happens with this $5 million appropriation. So we always, even if it's for a good cause, we turn over every stone to make sure the money's being spent right uh, and going to the right places and that we're not uh, burdening the city uh, in the future. So tomorrow is the last meeting scheduled for the year. If we need an extra meeting to get that done, we might have to do that. I'm hoping we have all the answers provided to us tomorrow and people can make an informed decision tomorrow. Uh, but that's gonna be the last meeting of the year. And then we start off right again, um, the first Monday in January. Okay, Councilor McLaughlin, um, I've said this in the past couple of, couple of meetings, but maybe premature, but congratulations on your reelection as president of the council. 
And from the Somerville Media Center, I want to extend our thanks again to the City Council, all the members of the City Council who have taken the time to appear on the Media Center to try to disseminate information in a very understandable and very um, folksy kind of way. It's a conversation. Um, it's part of our mission to provide information about our government, our city government. Um, so any closing thoughts for any of the councilors before we sign off for 2020? I just want to put it back on you, Joe. How, how is the Sumble Media Center doing with their, their, uh, their funding and, and so on? And what can we do to help uh, with that? Uh, we have returned um, our edited contract with the city back over to the city's attorneys. Our attorney sent it back to their attorney yesterday with some edits, suggestions, and changes. We hope, we, the Media Center, hope to have that concluded either by Friday or early next week. If not, we continue on. Um, the mayor, um, in agreement with myself as president of the board of directors, and the mayor and I have come to an agreement, he will allow us to stay in the building until June of 2021. Uh, we are actively looking for a new home once again, albeit virtually, uh, but I have a terrific board of directors and some of them have taken on the task of relocation committee. Um, so as you, as all of the councilors know, we have to stay in the, within the confines of the city of Somerville. Mm -hmm. uh, we will be um, burdened with a lease agreement because I don't think there's any property owners in the city who are going to give it to us for free. Um, we have a brand new executive director who started this Monday. Some of you may remember her. Her name is Kat Powers. She was formerly the editor of the Somerville Journal, a former general manager of Gatehouse Media, and the former communications director for Massachusetts American Red Cross. Mm -hmm. uh, Kat started on Friday. We look forward to uh, her participation with the team. So more to come for 2020, but for now, um, we are stable. All of, I'm very, very happy that all of our staff are very healthy. Um, we continue on in a virtual slash by appointment only basis at the media center. But 2020 um, has not been um, like a year that I have ever seen. And I know I'm probably a few months older than Councillor McLaughlin. Um, but I would never want to go through another 2020. So let's hope that yeah. 2021 is going to be stable. Uh, and fruitful and productive for the media center and for the city of Somerville. And I, I just want to, want to highlight the, the crux of that message in that uh, if 2020 has shown us anything, it's the importance of being present and just being grateful for this moment. Here, here. Thanks for that update, Joe. You, you're all a real treasure and, uh, and um, look forward to things in the future. No one can do it alone, Jesse. I have one of the most brilliant teams in the city, and I don't mind boasting about it. Councilor Man, McLaughlin. You answer questions just as well as you ask them as well. Thank you, <laughs> Councilor McLaughlin. Thank you, Councilor Klingon. Thank you, Councilor Strezzo. Thank you to the team at the Somerville Media Center. We will see you all in 2021. For now, I'm Joe Lynch from the Somerville Media Center. Please stay safe. Stay informed. Happy holidays. See you next year. Thank you, everybody.